Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. I've been busy out in the shop working on a CNC machine I'm building. I just finished the Z-axis, there will be a link in the description below, and part of that assembly is going to be a CNC touch plate. For those new to the CNC world, a touch plate is used to set a consistent height for your Z-axis. This is ideal when you change a bit. There are commercial ones like the image above with the little red alligator clip that you clip to the lead. I hate those. I want a little plate with a built-in switch. The bit comes down, clicks the switch, and you're done. No alligator clips, no mucking around with your bit. All automatic, all running a script within Mach 3 using a USB CNC card. So if this sounds interesting to you, follow me along as I try to make a CNC touch plate out in the garage. I have a little beef with the Z-axis touch plates. The ones you normally see use an alligator clip similar to this, where you clip it onto the CNC bit and it grounds out when it touches a plate. I don't like having to do that. It's awkward to reach under the machine usually. It's one extra step I don't need. Enter a small push button clicky switch. This is what I used on my last CNC touch plate. Works really well. What you do is you bond this to a piece of steel or plastic, run two wires from it so when the bit comes down and touches that surface, it activates. There's no alligator clip. It's quick, it's easy, and it's simple. So I'm going to go out in the shop, cut some plastic, probably use a Forstner bit to embed this a little bit to hide the wires, maybe a little bit of hot glue to insulate them a little bit. Two wires come out, go into your CNC controller, and it's a quick, easy way to do it. Step number one, determine which of the four leads are actually usable. What we want is the normally open contacts, which happens to be this side, or the other side. I'm going to end up cutting two of these leads off so I don't make a mistake. Solder two wires to them to bring it out to my controller.
that was a simple and fun build. Zero cost for me because I had a chunk of plastic cutting board. I also had some wire and a little clicky switch. Probably if you had to buy all those things, you'd be into 10 bucks, so it's not very expensive. After you've built the switch, you need to wire it up properly. In the Mach 3 USB board, you want to tie one end of the switch into IN4. The other wire, surprisingly, goes to the 24 volt return. You'd think it'd be ground, but no, we're using 24 volts for sensing on this board. So the connections are IN4 and DCM. Another thing that kind of surprised me was when I went into Mach 3 under the configuration for ports and pins, if you go to the probe section, since the switch is active low, I had it tied with a active low green check mark. Don't do that. You want to keep that as an X. If you keep it as an X, it'll function properly. If you don't, when you go into the diagnostic screen, you'll see a green light on and a, the light will go out when you press the switch. So just make sure that you put port 3, pin 4, and you do not click on the active low. We have the wires connected to the Mach 3 USB board. Now it's time to configure the old Mach 3 program. So if you were to go into operator, the menu, edit button script, it will flash all the buttons that you can put a Visual Basic script with. Right now we're going to click the auto tool zero button. And in here is where I've pasted the script that I got off the internet. The things that you're going to need to change are the distance for your touch plate, which in my case is 0.48 of an inch. You're going to need to change whether or not you want it to come up with multiple choice. In this case, I don't. Whether or not you want a delay. I want three seconds delay before the z-axis moves. And whether or not you want it to speak or not, I do. And that is all you have to change. Once you've done your changes, you just say file save, close this window, and now you have that enabled and linked to your auto tool zero button. Click the reset so you're ready to go. And when you click this button, it should now do a countdown of however many seconds, and then it should start the motion. Right now, I do not have the machine connected as you can see right here, but that is how you configure it. So if we click on this. Three, two, one. Now, if that had been set up with the machine running, it would have gone down, touched my little clicky button, moved up, and then reset the, uh, the Z. Well, I hope that saves somebody some time and effort because it is kind of difficult to figure out how to build one of these little devices, although the process is not complicated. It is also time consuming to figure out how to configure it and how to wire it up. Hopefully, I've saved you some time. Also, don't be afraid to use things around your house. Save a few bucks where you can. Build it out of things you've got stored away in a box somewhere. Nobody cares. It's still going to work. The electrons don't care what wire it's on. They don't care what switch it goes through. So just use what you've got. Save a few dollars and we all win. As always, if you like this video, click the subscribe button. Maybe give me a thumbs up. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.